is probably up there with one of the most complex characters in cinema. Today is day two, Peeming Tom. Oh my god, I'm so excited because the last, obviously, yesterday's movie and then today's movie have both been films that really surprised me with their storylines. Uh, Peeping Tom is a movie from 1960, which I have always known about and always seen around. And I thought I had seen it until I looked into it a little bit more, but I was not prepared. <laughs> this film is definitely a lot deeper than I first uh, expected. I thought it was just going to be obviously about a Peeping Tom, but it really um, is an interesting look at a man's life. And it does have one of those unique point of views where it's kind of from the villain's perspective perspective um, but Mark who is the peeping Tom in the situation is probably up there with one of the most complex characters in cinema. The film follows Mark who lives in an apartment building and uh, his interaction with his neighbours. Um, he's a filmmaker and he uh, he does like pull focusing for um, cinematographers but he's also he makes his own films and he loves cameras and he's into that. He's also into you know getting stuff on camera um, and we find out quite quickly that he is a little bit of a maniac. There's so many things that I really liked about this film first being uh, his kind of traumatic past which is very detailed and very complicated and that's the thing he's a complex character because he has a complicated background it's not like one thing happened to him in his childhood and from there he became like a lawyer um, it was a lot of things it's kind of like a puzzle where they keep little bits secret and then they revealed them slowly and I really enjoyed kind of putting it all together. Another thing I really liked about the film is the way it was shot. Uh, I think it's really cool that the film was about like a cinematographer, like a person who's a filmmaker and then it also had a really cool aspects of filmmaking put into it. it had some really unique composition um, and very close up shots which I really liked. It's very odd for the time period but it also plays with light and shadow a lot and I love this. I love this in film when you utilize shadow as a positive thing instead of being a negative thing. In film we always find people trying to get rid of the shadows um, or in um, photography we find the same thing but I really like how they worked with a lot of shadows. You see this as they're like walking down staircases there's some really ugly shadows but they use it and they actually use it for framing um, so people like kind of go into the light and there's their faces like illuminated and everything else is dark. Sounds like very stereotypical kind of like 20s <laughs> Um, filmmaking but uh, I really liked the way they really um, I guess blocked where the characters would go um, in terms of lighting and I felt like it gave it so much more depth just like the storyline I feel like it kind of ties in because the storyline is a lot deeper than I thought it was gonna be and I felt like the visuals really worked with that the film is a lot more arty as well than I expected I thought it was gonna be like kind of a straightforward 60s horror um, about a peeping Tom as I said but it definitely has a very interesting like not like indie because I don't think it's like technically an indie film but it definitely has like an interesting art house kind of effect to it and again I can't help but say it is something I wasn't expecting. I can definitely see why this is a classic for a lot of people. I think that it was a complex dark story about a man and everything he's been through and it definitely shows all of his sides where usually when there's like a villain character you kind of figure out why they're doing that and that's kind of it but you really go through all the motions with him and yeah it's kind of one of those things where you're like problematically on his side <laughs> which I thought was really interesting and I also love the overwhelming theme which is about fear and capturing fear it's like an experiment you definitely have to check this one out because it is more than what it looks like and um, the way it's actually put together is really interesting and yeah I feel like tag and this this film really have changed my mind about a lot of filmmaking within horror which is so crazy because they're just two films and they're so polar opposites uh, but yeah I really enjoyed this film also I really like the music in this film uh, again with the art house they had some like really cool jazz music at certain parts of the film which you weren't expecting um, also it's not a slow film it goes for an hour and 40 minutes and I was expecting it to be a slow film because sometimes we do find I hate to say there's older films to be a little bit more of a slow burn it's not always a bad thing but I did think that this film was gonna be like a slow thing of you know a guy peeping through a window and then them finding him finally in the end not the case at all um, but the music definitely helped with the tempo keeping everything on track 
but there's so much going on so I really was impressed. I'm really on the fence with this film. I think like filmmaking wise I can understand why it's got such a high score. I think it's got like a 7.5 or something like that on IMDb and I would totally give it that because I would give it um, in between like a 7 and an 8. It's not, I don't know, it's not quite at an 8 for me but it's not, it's more than a 7 but I'm just going to give it a 7 because if I start giving out half points then I'm going to start giving out quarter points and then I'm going to start scoring things out of 100 so I'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10. I'm so glad that you guys suggested this one because it is really hard for me to watch classic films and um, have the time to do that and I really like in 31 Days of Horror how we can switch it up and if you didn't know that's kind of how I order the films. I like to switch up the decades so that we have something old and something new and it's all mixed around so it's kind of like a different feel every day anyway highly recommend this film definitely check it out and i'll talk to you guys tomorrow for another day of 31 days of horror thank you so much for being here if you're still here day two <laughs> we're not in the thick of it yet but please comment down below so i can know you guys are watching and i'll talk to you guys very soon see you tomorrow bye <laughs>